What's up everyone, Eber here with Hurricane X, and today we're checking out yet another monitor. But this time, it ain't gaming oriented. So for those of you who are expecting 1440p at 240 hertz with a G-Sync module and one millisecond response time, all of that backed by an IPS display, that's just not gonna happen. Actually, coming to think of it, that, uh, that doesn't even exist, so... Regardless of that, we're checking out a professional grade monitor from BenQ, more specifically the PD3200U. Uh, it's a 32 inch display featuring a resolution of 3840 by 2160, so 4K, and it comes with all the bells and whistles that professionals care about. So let's check out this monitor, but first, a message from our sponsor. Wondering how to fix a boring fan? Check out Halos RGB. They are super slim fan frames that light up your blades of any shade, come in 120 and 140mm sizes to fit any fan, and are controlled through your motherboard or your Fantex case. Available in beautiful aluminum or simple plastic, it's time to Halos your build. Outline what matters. All right, so let's get the specs out of the way. So this is a 4K 32 inch display that comes with an IPS panel, 10 bit support, 100% coverage of the sRGB color gamut, as well as support for Rec. 709. It natively runs at 60 hertz refresh rate, and it costs $800. So it's definitely an expensive investment, but if you're comfortable compromising the 4K resolution with something like a 1440p panel, BenQ does offer the exact same monitor with similar specs, except for the VA panel at around $500. Now, from a design standpoint, this display looks out of date, especially in 2017. Competitors like LG have already started shipping monitors with bezel-less screens, and they look quite modern. The bezels on this monitor are not flush with the screen, and they are pretty thick, uh, but it should fit in within a normal desk environment. Now, given that this is a professional monitor, it focuses more on utility than good looks, so keep that in mind. The build quality is pretty robust in my opinion. There were no signs of creaking, which was awesome, and the screen is matte coated, plus it does a great job diffusing reflections, even in a bright room setting. For those of you wondering, this monitor is VESA compatible, and it only supports the 100 by 100 millimeter configuration. The included stand offers up to six inches of height adjustment, vertical tilt up to 15 degrees, swivel adjust up to 45 degrees on both the left and right hand side. You can also fully pivot the panel 90 degrees if you so desire. So overall, the PD3200U check marks flexibility in all aspects, which is nice. The IO is kind of all over the place on this display. So let me walk you through that step by step. At the bottom, we have two USB 3.0 downstream ports, as well as two USB 3.0 upstream ports, audio line in, and a micro USB port for the control puck that I'll talk about shortly. The other rear end of the display houses the power input and the AC switch. The display connectors are placed on the right side of the panel and it features two HDMI 2.0 ports, a full-size DisplayPort 1.2 port, and a mini DisplayPort that's also 1.2 compliant. The lack of a Type-C DisplayPort connector is disappointing, especially at this price point, but on a positive note, BenQ does include the necessary display and USB cables to get you up and running. Oh, and there's still some more I.O. left on the right side of the bezels. Uh, the SD card reader is fast and it performs similarly to my external card reader, plus it runs at USB 3.0 speeds, so a very nice addition that professionals can take advantage of. You've also got a couple of USB 3.0 ports and a 3.5mm audio output. Honestly, these are all great inclusions for a display in this caliber. I would totally take advantage of that SD card reader, but I also need a Type-C connector, so thank you. If you're watching this, please fix that in the next revision. The five capacitive buttons to adjust the display settings are located at the bottom right-hand side of the monitor. When one of them is pressed, you're greeted with quick settings like brightness, input, picture mode, and the last option is to dive deeper into the OSD, which is where you can adjust the contrast, sharpness, gamma, color temperature, and the option to reset the color. The picture advanced tab is loaded with different profiles like Rec. 709, sRGB, CAD, animation, low blue light output, option for darkroom setting, and a custom user profile. There's also a dual view option where you can set half of your screen to display the picture profile of your choice. So for example, I can have the left side of the screen output an sRGB profile, and on the right, I can opt for a CAD profile. Really cool. BenQ has also included something called the hotkey puck, and this allows the user to switch between different color profiles with just a simple click. Out of the box, BenQ has preloaded the puck with CAD, sRGB, and low blue light settings, but you're always welcome to remap those buttons to other modes through the OSD settings, which by the way can also be accessed via the puck. Just be mindful that the puck needs to be plugged into the micro USB port underneath the display for it to fully function, and there are appropriate cable cutouts to route the cables as well, so that's nice. 
If you're working with multiple computers, the KVM switch, otherwise known as the keyboard video mouse switch, can come in very useful. Essentially, it allows the user to display and control the content from two different systems using the same screen and just a single set of keyboard and mouse. So this should help save space at your desk and potentially boost work efficiency. And now to answer the most important question, how does the display perform and what's the experience like using one of these? It's fantastic, guys. The color reproduction was excellent, especially when consuming content. Uh, viewing angles were far superior than TN panels or even VA panels out there. Uh, contrast ratio is just exactly what I wanted on a professional IPS display, so I'm really happy about that. Although the white seemed a bit warmer to my taste after switching from my 27 inch Dell 4K monitor, but that can easily be sorted with calibration. Do note that this panel does come factory calibrated out of the box and they have ensured that it meets the Technicolor color certification standards. Given that this is a 4K display, the image was super sharp uh, and it's easy to get accustomed to and perfect for content creators. I spend the majority of my time working with Premiere projects, researching and creating thumbnails for videos. And given the 4K resolution in a 32 inch form factor, I ended up setting the display at 100% scaling for the first few weeks to see how the content would look like. It took me a while to get used to, especially the text within the Files Explorer were a little smaller for my taste, but the screen real estate is just insane. For instance, take Premiere Pro running at the native 4K resolution. That program monitor is essentially displaying a pixel to pixel 1080p image that's super sharp and perfect for editing because there's plenty of room for the timeline and your effects window along with other items. But Adobe still has a lot of work to do with scaling the texts and the tools so that it doesn't strain your eye while looking at it. And then there's Photoshop, an absolute mess when it comes to scaling appropriately for a 4K display. The user can go in manually and set the UI scaling to 200%, which sadly is the only option available. So Adobe, if you're watching this, please give us some more options. I eventually ended up scaling the display to 125%, which worked just fine for me. The image was still tack sharp and Windows 10 does a pretty good job scaling the UI elements. Quick tip though, completely avoid the 150% recommended setting. It's just not worth looking at, especially for a 4K display. Although I'm curious to know how this monitor would work well with Mac OS, uh, since scaling on that platform seems to be a lot better than Windows, at least that's what I think, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. Okay, so can you actually get away with some gaming on this display? Maybe, but that ultimately depends on the hardware that you currently have. In my case, I was using a GTX 1080 Ti and it was easily able to drive modern titles at that resolution, uh, but you have to keep in mind that this is a 60 hertz screen and it does not come with FreeSync or G-Sync, so don't expect miracles. However, the display's color depth and excellent contrast ratio makes those games look really good. One last note on backlight bleed, I was actually not able to spot any with my review unit, but uh, what you're seeing right now is basically coming straight out of the camera at base ISO and bumping that up all the way up to 2000, still doesn't show any signs, so that's pretty awesome. So to conclude, the PD3200U from BenQ is a fantastic display for professional content creators. I definitely had a lot of fun editing videos, uh, doing my research, scripting, and of course watching content. The IPS display on this guy is absolutely phenomenal. You've got a lot of color profiles to work with like Rec 709, sRGB, uh, you know, specific profiles for CAD, animation, and of course you can adjust them. The flexibility is just insane with this monitor. I also need to mention that the IO on this guy is probably one of the best I've come across on any monitor. You've got an SD card reader that uses the USB 3.0 protocol. Uh, you've got two, actually four USB 3.0 ports and uh, a bunch of display IO connections. So I think when it comes to feature standpoint, this guy absolutely nails every bit of it. I should also mention that the 32 inch display is just perfect for the 4K resolution because you can scale it to 125% or even just use it at 100% and get that immense uh, screen real estate. Uh, I was more comfortable with 125% because Adobe still needs to work with programs and they still haven't updated it. And finally, let's talk about pricing because for $800, this is an expensive investment, but uh, if you're a professional who's just serious about your work, then cost shouldn't be a matter. In fact, I think what really matters is the return of interest that you get when you invest on something. So when you decide to purchase this monitor, uh, you will definitely enjoy the color reproduction and just your overall experience uh, using the 4K display. Now, if you're comfortable with compromising the 4K resolution for something like 1440p, you can definitely pick up the $500 variant of this exact same monitor, uh, but that basically comes with the exact same features that I mentioned earlier, except that you're getting a lower resolution. I definitely don't want to recommend this monitor for gamers out there because uh, it's 4K at 60 hertz. It doesn't come with G-Sync or FreeSync. And of course, you need beefier hardware to run a 4K display in the first place. So 
yeah, gamers out there, you should probably skip this one. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on the PD3200U from BenQ. What do you guys think of this display? If you're a professional out there, let me know in the comments down below on how this guy can benefit your workflow. Uh, I'm Ebor with Hurricane X. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next one.